Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we'll be reviewing the Borealis Shaman. This board features Borealis's hybrid rocker. So you got reverse camber between the feet and camber underfoot. So you got two independent camber zones, but you got the play of reverse camber between the feet. This board is available in 159 and 162. I rode this board at Copper Mountain after a foot and a half of snow had fallen in the previous day. There was some wind, there was fresh snow, heavy wind loaded snow, blown off snow, just chunder and crap, and I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my Rome Black Label bindings. More of a traditional shaped snowboard here. But it falls into the free ride spectrum in my opinion. You actually have a stiffer nose and tail and then a softer section through the middle with an okay amount of torsional flex, not like a crazy amount in there. And the overall flex is just stiff. Like let's let's be honest, this, this board's just just stiff. So when you're riding and you're plowing through chunder and shit, you get no chatter. Like this this thing just absorbs it so well from the tips all the way through the middle. You don't have to worry about chatter, you don't have to worry about plowing through chunder, anything like that. It just wants to push through everything in its path. When it comes to popping with this board, you're gonna notice that you have to load it up a lot to get anything out of it, and it's not the snappiest board. And it's actually harder to load up than a stiff traditional cambered board, which shouldn't be the case with this camber profile, but it is. So, I mean, it's one of those boards, like you're gonna feel it in your legs at the end of the day, you're gonna work hard to get it. Now, when you hit jumps with this thing, the lip pretty much does all the work. You might get like a little added bonus off the tail here and there, but by and large, the lip is doing all the work on this board. And as I've already said, I feel like this board falls more in the free ride spectrum than it does in the all mountain freestyle spectrum, even though the shape would tend to lead you to believe that it would be an all mountain freestyle board. It's not, it's an all mountain free ride board. You want to butter with this thing, you're going to work for it. You're going to have to put all your weight out over the tail or the nose and basically sit out there and really flex it and just hammer into this board to get anything out of it. And it's going to fight you the whole time. You're going to feel it. And that translates to how this thing jibs. Just fuck jibbing in the park with it. Go hit some log jibs at really high speed. And by log jibs, I mean like pole jams and rainbows and stuff, something you're just going to 50, 50 over. That's pretty much what you can do with this board. So you got added contact points right between the inserts in there and they're aggressive. And so that really locks this board in. Now, when it comes to carving with this board, I think like middle of the road carves are really strong suit. Yeah, you can do deep aggressive carves, but it kind of feels limited and short, tight, quick setup turns happen. I mean, the board is somewhat nimble edge to edge. I mean, there's other more nimble boards out there, but it grips, I mean, you got this contact right there. That It grips for sure, but it really just stands out as being one of those boards that does those medium mellow cars where you're just like, you're locked in, you're going, you're turning, you're not really driving too hard, you're not railing hard turns with it. Who's this board for? The hard charging all mountain free ride guy, like someone that really wants to push it to the limit. Comparable boards, the niche story, the Kemper Screamer, the LibTech TRS, fuck me, this board is stiff. It's aggressive. It was a workout riding this thing, but it was great at plowing through chopped out chunder with ease. Like it just pushed through everything. You don't feel any chatter. It does lock in when it's on edge and it stays there. It's not the most aggressive board for carving. There's better boards for carving out there, but it does what you need it to do. And with that said, I mean, is it good? It's okay. Is it bad? It's okay, you know, it's it's a middle of the pack type of board. So this, oh, wouldn't you know, it's a Kemper with literally the exact same shape to it. So yeah, um, for anyone that doesn't know, this shape is actually a niche story. Uh, niche was gonna go to GP87, they didn't, but they had the mold shaped and everything for the story. So GP87 is regurgitating that shape. So you can get it on the Screamer, the Shaman, or you could buy the story from Niche that's made at the Kyle factory with the exact same shape and side cut to it. So yeah, there's that. This has been my review of the Borealis Shaman. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. 
If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really want to support us and you just really want to see us grow out what we're doing over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.